Hello everyone and welcome back to the Football Psych YouTube channel. Hello everyone. I feel like I need to change that. I feel like it's not really different or unique. I've already got some of my own catchphrases. That's full time for this video and um, it would be rude not to when talking about liking and subscribing. I'm claiming them too, by the way. I'll definitely come up with them. I don't think anyone else does. You can let me know if they do. But I feel like I need one for the intro. Hello everyone's just not really cutting it. What about yes people? Yeah, we'll go with that. Yes people. Let's try that again. Yes people, welcome back to the Football Psych YouTube channel. See, that's definitely better. Anyway, I really need to stop talking out my backside and uh, probably get on with today's video, which is gonna be a little bit more of a serious note to be honest, and it's the dark truth about football academies. What happens to those who don't make it? But before we get into that, make sure you do click the like button. Subscribe if you are new around here and you enjoy football content, you are in the right place. And also click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. It would be rude not to. See, that's another one of my... Anyway, um, now that's done, let's talk about football. any one time in the English football academy system, there can be between 10 and 12,000 boys coming through the ranks. Now in the Premier League alone, there are three and a half thousand boys currently in the system, starting at as young as just nine years old. But it begs the question, what happens to those who don't make it professional? What happens to those who don't make a living out of the game they love and invest so much time into? Let's find out. So I guess to really grasp what the system is like for players who don't make it, we have to look at individuals who have come through it. Take Jeremy Wiston, for example, a bright young prospect coming through Man City's academy in 2018, 2019. And um, was a really good player, looked really promising for him. But unfortunately, in May 2019, he suffered a really long term injury. So the club decided to release him as they felt his commodity was gone. He was maybe no more value to them anymore. Now, Jeremy didn't take this very well. In fact, he was really distressed. And like I said, he was released in the May 2019 and he was found hanged in his room in October 2019. Now, this is just one example of a young player who gets cut, whether it be injury or ability or maybe their potential is, is capped or seen as not as valuable as someone else's, you're cut, you let go, your contract's terminated. So for Jeremy, he stopped playing in spring 2019. He didn't know what else to do. So roll on a few months into the autumn and he took his own life. This tragic case study really does highlight how devastating a release from an academy can be for a young person, a young lad. Now in this case, Jeremy was 18. And although that's really young, like I've already discussed, players can enter the academy as young as nine. And I know that maybe there's a certain age where you'd even contemplate taking your own life, but it just shows you that then mental health problems and those implications can affect someone. So whether you're 18, 21, 14, I think we really have to look at the system as a whole and think what more can be done for these young and vulnerable people. Now, I think we can all appreciate how difficult it is for these academy coaches. You know, at the end of the day, they're tasked with bringing through the best talent of that pool of players they've got available. But ultimately, the system is kind of built in such a way where it's not a case of who's going to get cut, but when you're going to get cut. You think from the age of nine, a squad would maybe kind of join the academy. Now they play up till 23's level, but how many of them actually make it that far? Yes, some go out on loan and some get transferred to other clubs, but a lot just get cut. And at the end of the day, it's the coach's decision to decide who stays and who goes. 
In fact, I was reading an article earlier and I saw that one player has come out and said they almost felt like they were training partners for the players with ability. You know, the players who had that potential, who you could see had a bit more about them. And that's fine. You've got to bring the best talent through. But to almost treat the other players as the rest, you know, you've, you've got the bib on, you're kind of... You just come to training and, and at the part, but there's no hope for you really. And I don't think there's there's not a hell of a lot of communication, but players aren't stupid. They know maybe when they're just there to make up the numbers and it's really sad to hear. Although the frameworks and schemes within these clubs has improved dramatically in the past decade, and it really has, there's more of an emphasis on mental health and, and off the pitch stuff, not just education, but you know, skills and learning to be a young man ultimately. But more needs to be done still. Just because we've improved, it doesn't mean the situation is in a good state. It, well, let's not kid ourselves, more needs to be done. When you get released from an academy, you are therefore almost no longer an employee. All connections are cut off. You don't go into the building anymore. You're on your own. You've got to navigate life. And I think the most important thing I've mentioned in a couple of podcasts is a football player is labelled as a football player. So when they're not a football player anymore, what does that mean? They have no sense of purpose. They have no sense of being. That's what they are. They play football. They go into the academy nearly every day. You know, I know young lads don't and they kind of go after school, but once you start turning 16, 17 and maybe in the under 18 squad, you're in every day. You know, that's what you do. You go home to rest and recover. So when you're not a football player anymore, what's left? You know, you could have been in the system 12 years and yes, not full time, the whole time, but that's all you know. That is your world. The universe ends at the academy building you go to, you report to. So we've really got to think about how that affects players mentally. They are branded a football player. Their friends will know them as the footballer in the group, the one who made it. You haven't made it. Until you're really walking out on your first team debut, and you've got the backing of the first team manager. You haven't made it. Let's not, I'm, I'm not trying to be cut from here, but we can't kid ourselves. You haven't made it until you secure that big contract. And even then it can be taken away from you. So you can't begin to imagine how difficult it is for people like Jeremy, who for that long know their purpose, know their role. That's their function, they're a football player. And suddenly it's gone. So it's genuinely, what else? What, ha what else do I have? That is my life and it's gone. So what can be done by football academies to try and put this right? To try and shift it in a, in a real direction? Like I said, things have changed. But what can be done to systematically change how players are treated once they've gone? Well, first of all, I think there needs to be more transparency. I can appreciate that it's not always that black and white, who is going to make it, but a coach is going to be mindful of who really does have the talent and who is there maybe just to make up the numbers, to make up the squad. Maybe more transparency with the player's family. And that, that's where it starts. More communication and being more open. The second one has got to be pastoral care. The responsibility and duties of clubs, even after a player's left, it's all well and good while you're in the building, everything's going well. You have your daily challenges and, and difficulties, but you're still there and you're, you're contracted and you're playing football. But when that's gone, like I said, when you're not in the building anymore, then it's stripped away from you. So maybe more needs to be done and support systems offered to players and families once they've departed the club. You know, not just to cut all contact, but actually try to keep them kind of engaged and maybe not bring them into the building. I can appreciate they don't, they, they don't go there anymore. They don't report there anymore, but 
maybe offer them some sort of scheme or kind of opportunities to get into in order to try and get accustomed to, to real life, life without football. And number three is maybe while players are at the club, I know that education is a big thing for players under 18, but what about life skills and getting up and delivering to their peers and confidence is often a, a big thing and it's all well and good expressing yourself on a football pitch, but when you haven't got a ball at your feet, are you confident? You know, can you take responsibility? Can you stand up and passionately talk about something you believe in? Because that's key. They're not going to look at you as your ability with a ball at your feet when you go to a job interview. They're going to see you as a human. So you need to develop those social and life skills, which I think can be developed further in the academy system. But let me know what you think. Is the truth about football academies really that dark? You know, is it kind of just blown up? I don't think so personally. There's one case study I provided today about a young lad who took his own life because of the place he was in mentally after he he lost his purpose ultimately. But let me know in the comments. What do you think? You know, is it is it really that bad? Should more be done? And maybe give some suggestions about what should be done in the future. But that is going to be full time for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. A bit of a dark one, I know, but I hope you did learn something, you know, it's trying to offer some insight into what happens behind the scenes. But that is going to be it. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Been crying so much to the poltergeist. Trying to hold on a love, but it's frosty.